So in today's session, we're going to talk about a low risk way of buying property number one. And it's boring, right? This is the whole point of this being boring. But the very first thing that you need to do, if you want to start buying your property, it might not even be your first. It might be your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, your tenth, your hundredth. It doesn't matter. But what you've got to do is you've got to allocate the money towards deposits. Now, if it is your fourth or your fifth or your sixth, you can refinance, bring some money back out, and that makes life a bit easier. That's what I did. Harder today because you can't offset the interest payments against that against that rental payment. Section 24 has ruined that. Excuse me. So you can't do that. But that's not to say you still can't do it. It's just slightly different. It's just a little bit harder. And also, if you're buying through a limited company, you can refinance and you can use that um, interest payments against the, the rent anyway. Just, you know, the rental income has to stay in the company. Then you've got to find a way of bringing it out of the company and so on. But the very first thing that you should be doing, and I don't care how old you are. If you are 18, you are watching this. You should have an ISA. OK, if you're 50 and you're watching this, you should have an ISA. If you're 78 and you're watching this, you should have an ISA. The reason why we talk about an ISA, and again, um, you know, this is not financial advice. Please see a financial advisor about ISAs, OK? Buy the books, do your research. Uh, it's a podcast, for God's sake. It's not legally binding. Do your own research, right? But you should have an ISA. The reason why you want an ISA is any money that you get, any money that you earn, any money that you're gifted, any, anything like that, that money can go into an ISA. And if you put £1,000 into an ISA and it magically turns into £10,000, you've made a gain of £9,000. But because it's in an ISA, it's tax-free. So it's, an ISA is a wrapper. It wraps up your money and any gains that that money makes, you can just draw down. You have to put it on your tax return. There's probably a space of that. I don't know. My accountant does mine. Uh, but there's a space of that somewhere probably that says, yeah, this is money that I earn, but it was from an ISA, so it's tax free. So please don't tax it. And they won't tax it. That's why you want an ISA. If you're putting money into a savings account, uh, and you can put it into an ISA that's a savings account. It's called a cash ISA. But if you're just putting money into a savings account, you're going to get taxed on that. Any gains, you know, there's 0.01% uh, interest that Lloyd's gives you or whatever it is, they'll tax you on that, even though it's so small. Whereas if you have put it into an ISA, it's not taxed. Now, one of the reasons also why you want an ISA is that you want to start buying like an index fund. So if you're putting away £100 a month, every single month, <clears throat> into an index fund, by the end of the year, you've got 1,200 quid, but you haven't got 1,200 quid because if you're putting it into an index fund, like I use the Vanguard and there's two types, there's the accumulator and there's the, what is it, accumulator and cash flow, I think. One grows faster than the other, but the other's uh, about giving you more cash um, back out, you know, to live on. Uh, but it's up to you which one you want to do. Again, seek financial advice, do your research and so on. Use Hargreaves Lansdowne. You can, if you want to do it all on your own, you can do. But if you if you're not that aware of financial uh, uh, stuff, you need to start reading. You need to really be educated financially. I speak to so many people, and they are financially illiterate. I don't know what an ISA is. I don't know what a pension is. I don't know how any of this stuff works. So before you even put any money into it, buy your books on what an ISA is. Do your research. Listen to uh, Financial uh, Advisors podcast. Do your, from the UK specifically, okay? Not the American ones because they work on different systems. They have a 401k. Like, I don't know anything about a 401k. So listen to the UK ones. Uh, but open yourself an ISA. Now, you've got to start putting some money into it. This is the key. And we'll talk about that a little bit earlier, uh, a little bit lower down. So the other thing is um, that you, you want an ISA because you're going to have this regular income, this regular saving going into that ISA. And it's going to grow slowly. Will it dip from time to time? Of course it will. Will it catch back up from time to time? Of course it will. And over a period of time, 10, 20 years, it'll start to grow. Now, we're not going to keep our money in there. It's just a protection against inflation, really. That's why we that's why we do it. If the FTSE 100 going up 4% a year, let's say. And I did some research before we came live. It's about 7% of the returns on the FTSE 100, apparently, uh, from the website. I can't remember which website it was, but that's, that's the return. But... You want to be just be getting between 4 and 7% returns, and it's just a hedge against inflation. Really, that's it. Really, you're saving this money every single month, um, and this money is going to go towards your deposit on, on the property, effectively. But why have I put not crypto? Why do we not want you investing in crypto? And I'm not saying that you should never invest in crypto. First of all, let's just get the language right. When you invest in crypto, you ain't investing in shit. You ain't investing in crypto. You are gambling on crypto. OK, there's a, there's a theory called The Greater Fool. And before, before I came live, I was watching a video back in 1999. And we're talking about 
uh, dot coms and it's a new way of making money and the whole thing is a game changer and it's like a money making machine and people are making millions overnight and you got to get into it and then what happened 1999 what happened bang massive crash the dot com bubble absolutely crashed all these people that were riding this massive wave making 10x 100x returns on their investments lost all of it people uh, killing themselves uh, people ruined, completely ruined. And you know, it's taken them 20 years to recover. And so I think kind of that's where we are right now. We could be right exactly there where we are now. Now, don't get me wrong, I've still got money that I put into cryptocurrency. But it, as a percentage of the money that I allocate every single month, it's a tiny amount, it's 10%. So any money that I invest or pay down mortgages with, I think we covered this, didn't we? Let me tell you what those figures are, because not everybody watches all the uh, all of the podcasts. Uh, but my investment strategy is 10% in crypto, 30% paying off debt, like mortgage debt. 50% is saving up for a new property, and 10% goes into an ISA. Now, as it happens, for 50% that I'm saving up for a new property, that actually goes into an ISA as well. It's, it's, it's allocated over to one side right now. But... 10% into an ISA, 50% is saving up for a new property, 30% uh, is to pay down mortgage debt, and 10% goes into crypto. Now, I see people, and they're putting 30 and 40 and 50 and 80% into crypto, and I'm like, okay, have you, have you, got, have you got ISAs? No. Nope. Have, have you got property rentals? No. Nope. Have you got any other investments? No. Nope. And they're literally putting it all on, on black on the roulette to double the money. And, and that's fine 50% of the time. Unfortunately, you don't know which 50%, uh, which side that happens to be. Is it red that's coming up or is it black that's coming up on that roulette table? And I don't want that for cryptocurrency. The idea here is that we're buying property in the lowest risk, the most boring way possible. And not investing in an, it, it, sorry, not investing in crypto is boring. Investing in a crypto, you're holding on to the edge of your seat and you wake up and the next day you're checking your investments and you're, oh my God, it's gone up 20%. Oh my God, it's gone down 30%. And you're like, where is it going to be tomorrow? And your heart's pumping out of your chest. And we don't want that. We want nice, calm, boring as fuck. That's what will make your money over the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You want a wild wide? You go and invest in crypto. Stick, remortgage the house, put it all in. That's definitely not financial advice. Woof! You are going to have some fun. You might be divorced. <laughs> you might be bankrupt, but you're going to have some fun along the way. Look, if that's where you want to get your kicks, do it. But just do 50 quid, 100 pounds, and, and trade the markets knowing that that's your limit. But I think that's, you know, we talk about Gamblers Anonymous and all that kind of thing. I think that's a slippery slope down down to the down to the bottom and I don't want that I want us to get rich slow but I want us to get rich definitely um, and so open an ISA move some money over to an ISA invest a small amount into crypto contemplate where you are debt wise and actually before you even open an ISA if you're carrying £20,000 worth of credit card debt instantly you can get a 15% return on that money instantly if you've got 20% uh, £20,000 of credit card debt you want to know how to do it pay off your bloody credit cards and people go, oh, well, I've only got a little bit on credit card. I've got 1800 Right, pay it off. Yeah, but it's it's uh, not percent interest. Yeah, but it will always be. Pay the damn thing off. Why are you carrying debt? Get rid of debt. It's as simple as that. Unless the debt is paying you more money than the debt costs, right? It's bad debt. What I mean by that is, if you've got a mortgage on a house, that's debt. But if a, if the mortgage is 300 and the house is pulling in 600 you're 300 quid up. That's good debt because you're using the debt to generate more cash flow than you're spending. Bad debt is where you have um, you spent something on a, on a mortgage, uh, on a credit card, or on uh, stores like a store card to buy some clothes, or even a car loan. Potentially, what depending on what that car loan is, could be bad debt. Depends on the car. Okay, if you're paying for a very nice BMW at eight hundred pound a month, or a nice Range Rover at eight hundred pound a month, but you've got no assets paying for that. I, in my opinion, that's bad debt. You should be driving a hundred pound a month Nissan X Trail. I just swapped my car for a Nissan X Trail. I've got rid of a V7, uh, sorry, the V6 3.7 litre Jeep, beast of a car. Mm. You turn it on and it wakes up the whole neighbourhood, and it's a gorgeous car. Boy, it was guzzling fuel. It was like a prison uh, wrapped around me because it was just so expensive. And I'm still a tight northerner, given <laughs> given everything else that's happened. I'm still tight, you know. And, you know, it's, I get 350 miles out of, not even miles, kilometres, 
uh, out of like 105 uh, euros. A few, it was just costing me so much money. So we got rid of it. And I'm now moving that money over, paying down debt into an ISA, uh, 10% into crypto, uh, and the rest into um, buying another property. And, you know, the biggest flex, and I've, I've said this, and I need to do a podcast on this, but the biggest flex is knowing you can afford a Lambo and buying a Nissan. <laughs> right. That for me is a massive flex. I would rather go uh, paddle surfing on a Monday morning at nine o'clock in the summer than driving around a Lambo. Where am I going to go in a Lambo? I'm going to go to the supermarket and to pick up the little one. I'm going to do like, you know, I don't know, 400 miles a month in it. Like, what's the point? 500 miles a year to have a hundred thousand pound car. It's ridiculous. Uh, whereas I could put that money into, you know, into something that's going to continue to grow and so on. Now, at some point, you're probably going to reach, you know, if you're doing 100 grand a month, go buy yourself a Lambo, a £1,000 a month, 1%, why not? But most people don't do that. They're spending, you know, they earn four grand a month and they're spending £800 of that four grand on uh, a Land Rover. Uh, that's like 20% of their income is going on a bloody car. That's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Whereas, actually, if they bought more properties, they could actually then just put that uh, money into... Uh, buying a car then and so the car becomes free right so we want to do this in the most boring way possible 